Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Very glad to be here. I am here tonight to share a vision with you about air. Air that we can't see, but air that's around us all the time. And in that air, there are particles. Some of them we can see. If they're larger than 50 micron, you can see them. Unfortunately, most of the particles you can't see. And particles that are smaller than one micron. One micron is only if you take one millimeter and you divide it by thousand, you get one micron. And if you weigh all that particles that is in one liter of air, then you get something called PM1. And PM1, you will hear more about now. What is that and why is that important for our industry within ventilation? Why does it matter? Do I care about PM1? Shouldn't I care about it? I think you should. I think it would revolutionize our industry and make our life easier. So I would like you to take you to a journey, which is, in the beginning is rather dark, but if you follow with me, in the end, it will be bright. So, I will also give you some numbers. This is a big number. This is 50 million. And where did that come from? Well, in one liter of air, there are, could be, here in Krakow, for instance, 50 million small particles. And they all affect us all the time. And how do they do that? What is affecting us? Uh, where do they all come from? Well, most of these particles, they come from cars all over the world. They are in the cities. But unfortunately, the small particles, they travel. They travel all around the globe because they don't settle. Big particles with big mass, they settle, they fall down. Small particles, they fly a very, very long time. And in polluted streets like this one, this is one of the most polluted streets in Europe, we have made measurements. And unfortunately, many of these particles are cancerogenic. And we need to be protected from them, one way or another. Because seven million people die every year from bad air, indoor and outdoor. And that's, of course, very negative. So what can we do about it? There's a lot of things we can do about it, but the, one of the things that has happened is that 92% of all people in the world live in an environment where the air is bad, inside and outside. And another number, 70, what is that? Well, 70 square meter, that is our lungs, inside our body. There is a fantastic system, our, our lungs, our breathing system. It will take in the air, it will take the oxygen into our blood, it will make us living creatures. It will make us run, jump, feel of joy, do anything. But of course, 70 square meter is like this stage or something. What if this whole area is filled with dust? And the air cannot go into the blood. Of course, we doesn't feel that well. So if you're out on a polluted street, this is what happens. The particles from the air, they go into your system, and unfortunately, they go through your lungs and into your blood. All the small particles, they pass our systems, because we were not made for that. We have systems. Some people in the room have beards, that's very good because a beard is a G4, a filter, it will protect you. Then you have hair uh, inside your, your systems, in your nose and so on, the sizzle air, that protects you. But unfortunately, the smallest particles, those that we created, that human being, we, our systems can't protect us. We need something else. So, we, as human beings, we uh, need one kilo of food every day. We need two kilos of liquid, and we need 25 kilos of air every day, all the time. And the quality of that air is very, very important for us. So, 
This is a picture inside the lung. Here you can see the particles that are coming into the lung. The small ones in the end there that makes aggregate to get together, they can penetrate this wall and go into our systems. That's not so good. But of course, when we're here with your event, we're not in the outside air. We're not responsible for that. We're not responsible for all the cars in the world and their you know, cleaning systems. We're responsible for this. We're responsible for the buildings. We want to create a good indoor environment. That's what we should do. That's our job. And m many people in this hall working with all the systems within your event uh, are talking about air and quality of what we do. But there are things affecting this. Of course, six, a number six. What's that? Well, we have an energy directive, lot six. And that's great because it says you shouldn't use too much energy when you ventilate, when you cool buildings and so on. There's only one problem with that. It doesn't say anything about the quality of the air that we bring in. And there is actually only three reasons of bringing air into a building. You can bring cool air, you can bring warm air, or you can bring clean air. The cooling part you can do with water, the warming part you can do with water. But unfortunately, to bring in air, you need airline units, you need ductworks, you need all the things that we work with every day. And the thing that we have to do is to make it energy efficient. So how do we control that? What can we do? Well, of course, we have something, I hope. <laughs> it doesn't always, it doesn't always do what I want. Of course, we have your event. We have your event certification. Yes. <laughs> Give me a board for your event. <laughs> and in that way, we can control this. So we actually achieve a good, uh, indoor uh, environment by setting up rules and standards within your event so that we don't only save energy, we also say, how do we do this in a good way? Because if we don't do that, all the system will shrink down, they will be very small and tiny, and they will just go for small portions of air that you need to breathe. It doesn't mean you need to breathe well, it just needs you need to breathe without dying. But you could live in a submarine and you can have 10,000 ppm of CO2 and still live. It's not going to be very nice, but you can live. So this system helps us to keep the quality up. What has happened now is that something happened in August. There was a voting worldwide, a new voting about the new standard, about filtration of air. In this new voting, we suddenly got a connection because normally when we Talk about outdoor air all around the world. You measure in all cities. You measure something called PM10, PM2.5. But when we talk inside the building, we are talking about filter classes like G4, F7, and so on. This means that people that work with outdoor air don't know what we're talking about. And people that work with indoor air don't know what they're talking about outdoors. Now this standard is going to be an ISO standard around the world. It's going to be the same standard. And it's going to be implemented all over the world, and suddenly we can talk about how it is inside and outside. We can start measuring. And I'm convinced that now, when we have the same measuring, you can measure the PM1 outside, and you can measure the PM1 inside. Wow. And then suddenly we have a connection. Because when we build our systems, that's what we want to do. And if we can prove to everybody that the ventilation system brings good air to the buildings, and you can actually measure that the indoor is much better than the outdoor, which means our systems make sense. And what if the vision would be that when you go into the first thing you look at is how is the ventilation? Where are the ducts, like here? Not the floor, if it's marble or if it's very oak or anything like that. You would watch where the air comes from, what's the quality of the air? Then our industry would lift. There would be a total another vision. The architects would compete. Who brings in the most air into the Can we see it? Wouldn't that be a great vision if we did that? And we have also tried. Down in the Olympics now, in Rio de Janeiro, we gave the athletes from the Swedish team special treatment. We took away all the small particles, smaller than PM1, 
where they lived. And we also, for some of them who had allergic re reactions, installed equipment in their home to take away the small particles to make them better. And what happened? Well, some of them, like Sarah here, became winners with the gold medals, silver and bronze. And the vision that I have, that I would like to share with you, that if we can get the PM1 message out, that the PM1 particles are the dangerous one, but we in the ventilation industry, we can take them away, we can equip all buildings in a way with ventilation systems, with cooling, heating, but a very good indoor environment when it comes to particles that are dangerous for, the, for us. Because in Europe, where most of us are from, all, also in other parts of the world, we spend most of our time indoors. And there we can actually affect the indoor air. The outdoor air we can't do so much about. In our industry we can because we save energy, but we can't do so much about it when it comes to spreading it, new ones. We don't produce cars, we're not involved in industrial process, most of us. But the indoor air, we control all the time. So what I'm hoping for is that we see for the ventilation industry all over the world a very bright future where people will see that when they walk into a building, they can actually see the quality of the air in the building. And hopefully they will fight for the best buildings with the best air. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.